Washington and Weston train. Today we are taking you aboard engine number 8408, which is a diesel locomotive that produces 600 horsepower and provides 49,500 pounds of tractive effort. We're the Jones Fosters and we renovated this 22 foot camper, which we now call home. We just got done exploring the beautiful Namor estate, which you should totally check out after this video because it is awesome. But currently we're in Wilmington, Delaware, and that's where today's adventure continues with the Wilmington and Western. Thank you. The Wilmington and Western was officially opened for freight and passenger services in 1872. Today, the 10 miles of track that remains runs through the Red Clay Valley. It used to go all the way to Landenburg, Pennsylvania, but in the 50s, they cut the tracks back due to decline in freight traffic. I see a nap in your future. On part of the journey, you pass through rock cuts, which are like tunnels, but without a roof. And the rock actually comes within five feet of the train on either side. When the railroad was being built, they used picks, axes, shovels, and black powder to remove the rocks by hand. It cost so much money to blast through the rock that the original owners declared bankruptcy in 1877. That was just a few years after being in operation. Eventually, new owners took over and the line became profitable again, moving things like kale and clay, vulcanized fiber materials, snuff, iron, and coal to and from the mills along the route. So here you can get off the train and enjoy a nice picnic, or you can continue to ride and then they will come back and pick you up. If you stay on the train instead of stopping to picnic, you'll take a little round trip to Ashland and Yorkland. You'll also pass the only iron bridge on the railroad. All of the other bridges that you pass are built with steel or wood. The last stop before turning around is the now abandoned National Vulcanized Fiber Company. They used to make fiber based products such as electrical insulators and wood veneers. So the train is turning around and we're going that way. So I need to reverse my seat. Stopping to pick the people up for lunch, so we're gonna go check out the bathroom. I can figure out how to get to it. Toilet. <laughs> 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 
So maybe try to use the bathroom before you board the train. <laughs> An interesting fact about this railroad is that it is the oldest tourist railroad operated entirely by volunteers. I'm just going to say that again. It's operated entirely by volunteers. That is so fascinating and it is also the seventh oldest standard gauge heritage railroad in North America. The railroad has also faced many challenges. For example, in 2003, what was left of Tropical Storm Henry sent so much water into this area that six of the historic bridges were destroyed and the railroad was reduced from 10 miles to two. But on June 30th of 2007, Locomotive 98 pulled one of the Royal Blue coaches on the restored railway and the Wilmington and Western was reborn. Apparently Christmas is a pretty unique time to visit as a lot of these houses along the railway get involved and put up lights and the trains are also decorated. So in the 60s, the FRA declared this type of train unsafe because of the open area right here. So they no longer allowed this train to run, but they were able to purchase each of these for $700 so that they could take people along this railway like we did today. So we were in 410 and this one was actually built in 1914. We thoroughly enjoyed our ride on the Wilmington and Western. Even though it was a little bit of a pricey nap <laughs> from Marlon's perspective, the scenery was awesome, the history was interesting, and it was definitely worth it.